Good morning, fellow revelators, to those whose ears are inclined to hear the Spirit of God. As I was awakening, probably 3, 4 a.m. this morning, as it's my habit, even though I was exhausted, it's just my habit to do this, turning my heart to the Lord, and he began to release a revelation to me. In Revelation, you know, I'll just open in prayer. Father, I thank you for your great goodness, which you have laid up for those that fear you, which you have wrought for those that trust in you before the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret of your face from the pride of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us, for leading us into all truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. It is Friday, June 30th, 2023. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. As I was reading that this morning before I came down, it thundered, and the thunder must have gone on for like 30 seconds. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church, to the churches. He who overcomes will I give the hidden manna and a white stone. This hidden manna, I've never really thought too much about it or even meditate on it to but the Lord just, bam, released it to me as I was, what he began to release to me this morning. What really this hidden manna is. I'm not going to speak regarding the white stone, but the hidden manna. And so as I was awakening, what my heart was turned to was, or he led me to, was 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 6, where it says, How be it we speak the wisdom of God How be it we speak the wisdom of there goes the thunder gun. How be it be it we speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect? Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world for our glory. See, he ordained it before the world. Before, see, this goes back to the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world for our glory, which none of this print, none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. You see, because this wisdom, this hidden wisdom comes 
through a revelation of the cross. And if, if they had known that, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, when I was a small child growing up in Pennsylvania, at the time my family was going to a Baptist church in Reading, Pennsylvania, First Baptist Church, and there was a man in that church who had an experience and he began communicating and became a medium of a familiar spirit. And this spirit, this familiar spirit that he was channeling was said to be of this woman. Her name was Katie Knoxted. She was a German woman who was killed in a ski accident. And so supposedly this woman was speaking to this man. And he became a medium for this spirit, this familiar spirit to flow through. <laughs> and this is freaky, but this isn't a Baptist church, right? This group came out of this church and we would have camps and we would sit around this man as this spirit channeled through him and would speak. I was born again at, the, at that point, even though I was, I don't know how old I was when we, when this was going on, but I became born again in that church at the age of seven. So I had the spirit of God. And at one of these seances, you could say, I guess that's what you would call it, as he's laying there, right? He would lay there until this spirit then would channel through him and he would speak and you and then people would sit around and ask questions to this spirit i remember there's not much of anything i remember that that spirit spoke but one thing i remember by the spirit of god the spirit said the lord was never crucified Because, see, if they had known, they never would have crucified him. So now what are they trying to, these lies, oh, he was never crucified. I remember Miles Monroe. He was quite a charismatic teacher, leader, incredible influence and he began to enter into error. He was, he was killed in a, I think it was a helicopter accident. Him, I believe his wife and maybe a child or grandchild or, or somebody else in ministry. But for, before he was killed, he began to enter into error. And I saw him when he had come to Omaha to minister because um, the pastors that I went to the church to, they were under a ministry which Miles Monroe essentially was over that individual. And so they held him in reverence um, or in esteem, you might say. And um, so we went to this meeting that Miles Monroe, and I, I saw people bow before his, bow before him. And I was like, wow. And, and then I had heard later, I, I, I saw a recording where he was ministering to this really large church and he was, this message he was releasing was, we've got to go beyond the cross. Was, and, and I'm not going to speak the exact words because I don't remember them without looking up the video and hearing it again. But I would have walked out of the church it was such a grievous error about going, okay, it's time to get past the cross. It's time to, see, this, this is that same demonic of the princes of this world that, that had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the lower glory. We speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect, 
yet not the wisdom of the world or of the princes of the world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, in a secret. A hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world for our glory. What is this hidden wisdom? What is this hidden manna? To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It passes carnal knowledge. It passes worldly wisdom. We can only receive it through the work of the cross and the revelation of the cross. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. To none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. The hidden wisdom which God has before the world ordained for our glory. See, when we come to know this wisdom, when we eat of this manna, when we come to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, we become filled with all the fullness of God. Christ, the hope of glory, comes in and inhabits that place. See, it says God from the has ordained from before the world for our glory. This is Isaiah 60. <laughs> As it is written, man has not heard nor perceived with the ear. Paul is, is, is quoting or paraphrasing out of Isaiah 64. What's Isaiah 64 talking about? Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might flow down at your face. It's talking about the king of glory coming in and inhabiting the first fruits company. Of people who have eaten of this hidden manna of this hidden wisdom that is found in the revelation of the cross. Which God has ordained before the world for our glory. the princes of this world knew they never would have crucified the Lord glory. For eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. To be filled with the knowing of this love. To be inhabited by the king of glory. To manifest this love to all of creation. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He who overcomes, will I grant to eat of the hidden manna. How do you overcome? By the blood of the Lamb that was slain upon that cross. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word, their testimony, the truth. The blood is, is his mercy. See, mercy and truth is the fellowship of the mystery, of the secret. It brings forth this hidden manna of the revelation of knowing the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It passes carnal knowledge. He who overcomes by the blood of the Lamb, by the 
by the mercy and the word of their testimony. The truth is to see that's to be rooted and grounded in love. We are rooted in his love through his blood, through the mercy. Romans chapter six says that we were planted, planted, rooted, planted together into the likeness of his death. That we might be raised in the likeness of his resurrection. That's what it means to be rooted in his love that Paul speaks about in Ephesians chapter 3. That you being rooted and grounded in love in the fellowship of the mystery. To come to know this love which passes knowledge. The carnal mind can't attain unto it. The carnal mind cannot eat of this hidden manna. Man has not heard nor perceived with ear, neither has I seen, O God, beside thee, what thou hast prepared for them that love thee. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. He who has an ear, let him hear. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God the deep and hidden things of God. This hidden wisdom, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Paul is paraphrasing out of Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. This is what David was entering into. Because the fellowship of the mystery is found in the key of David mercy and truth. And David in Psalm 139 says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. My carnal mind cannot attain unto it. It comes by the Spirit of God. And we eat of this hidden manna as we eat of his flesh. And we drink of his blood as we sit at the table prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our head with oil, the anointing of Holy Spirit. Our cup runneth over the sure mercies of David. <laughs> and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, Isaiah 55, even the sure mercies of David. And you shall call a nation which you know not, and nations which know not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. You have come to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church through Jesus Christ unto all ages, world without end. This hidden manna, this hidden wisdom is to come to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the wisdom of God. First Corinthians, back to first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14 says, the natural man, the carnal mind, the natural man receiveth not the things, the deep things of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually 
discerned. The Holy Spirit, your ear, must be inclined. You must meditate on him. Meditate on his word. Meditate on the cross. If anybody diminishes the cross or says, oh no, it never happened, or, you know, we got to move beyond, run. Man has not heard nor perceived with the ear, neither has I seen, O God, beside thee, what you have prepared for them that love you. Yea, doubtless, Paul says, I count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of this hidden wisdom, of this manna. I count it all lost, all my religious attainment, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. My status, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee. I excelled above all my peers, but it couldn't bring me into this knowledge. As 2 Corinthians, or, or yeah, 2 Corinthians one twenty eight says, Christ is the power and wisdom of God. And you'll see the context, this wisdom of God is in the cross for our glory. This hidden wisdom of knowing the love of Christ, which passes, it surpasses knowledge. It's foolishness with the world because the world cannot attain unto it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your face? I have, if I ascend into heaven, you are there at the height of your love. If I make my bed in hell, you are there at the depth of your love. If I take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me the length of his love. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even night shall be light about me. Yea, darkness hideth not from thee, for night shines as day, for darkness and light are both alike unto thee, for you have possessed my reins, the breath of his love. This is Isaiah 60, this revelation of the hidden manna, of the wisdom which God before the world ordained for our glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. You see how, why the religious is coming against the remnant? It's the spirit. And they who say, those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship at your feet and to know that I have loved you, that you've come into this revelation. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. With none of the princes of the world knew, had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Christ is my light. The revelation of his love. The Lord is my light and my salvation, as David said in Psalm 27. Whom shall I fear? This perfect love which casts out fear. which brings total surrender. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. 
and the nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about thee and see. They gather themselves together. They come unto thee. Thy sons come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and be enlightened, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. For the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces, the wealth of the Gentiles, the nations shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they of Sheba, shall come with their gold and their incense, and they shall come to see the wisdom of God. What did Sheba come to Solomon to see the wisdom? This hidden wisdom of knowing the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Whoa. All they of Sheba shall come with their gold and their incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar, the Muslim nations, shall be gathered unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee, and they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. What's the acceptance on the altar? Christ crucified is the acceptance on the altar. And they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as the cloud? Caught up together with the Lord in the clouds. <laughs> Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring their sons from far, their gold and their silver with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified thee. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have had compassion on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the, force of the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For that nation and kingdom which shall not serve, serve you shall perish, yea, that nation shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box tree, together. The pride of man being brought low at the feet of the Lord. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box tree, together. And I will beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Every knee shall bow. And the sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And they that despise thee shall bow themselves down. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I will make them to come and to worship at your feet. And the sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. To he that has an ear, let him hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He who overcomes, I give up the hidden manna. The hidden wisdom to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God which he has ordained before the world for our glory. Shalom. Shalom.